Hello, hello. I'm Brutton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we're going to talk about enzyme inhibition. Enzymes are biological catalysts that accelerate the rate of chemical reactions in living organisms. Inhibition of enzyme activity is an important regulatory mechanism. There are different types of enzyme inhibition. And in this video, we'll be discussing the major four types you need to know for the MCAT. Competitive, non-competitive, uncompetitive, and mixed. We're going to compare each type of inhibition to a graph of the uninhibited enzyme, shown in white. You'll see the axes are substrate concentration on the X and the rate of product formation on the Y. On the Y axis, we've labeled the value called Vmax. Vmax is when the rate of the reaction is no longer influenced by a substrate concentration. Essentially, it's going as fast as it can possibly go. Vmax is a constant that is dependent on the specific enzyme and the concentration of the enzyme. So if you mess with the amount of enzyme that's functioning properly, you will affect the Vmax. Additionally, Vmax is related to the value I labeled as Km on the x-axis. Km is the amount of substrate required to reach one half of Vmax. Km is a convenient way to measure enzyme affinity. As affinity increases, Km decreases. Keep these values in mind as we discuss each type of inhibition. To start, we'll begin with competitive inhibition. Competitive inhibition occurs when a molecule called the inhibitor competes with the substrate for the active site of the enzyme. The inhibitor and the substrate are structurally similar, and they bind to the same active site of the enzyme. As a result, the inhibitor blocks the binding of the substrate, and the enzyme activity decreases. How do you predict this will affect Vmax? Because you can add more substrate to overwhelm the effect of the inhibitor, Vmax will be unchanged. You'll see that as we increase the amount of substrate, the graph becomes shifted more and more to the right. Therefore, Km will increase. What does this mean about affinity? Well, we said that affinity increases when we move to the left, so affinity must be decreasing as we move to the right. And this makes sense because the inhibitor is making the substrate binding more difficult. Now let's take a look at non-competitive inhibition. Non-competitive inhibition occurs when an inhibitor binds to an allosteric site on the enzyme, which is different from the active site. This binding causes a conformational change in the enzyme shape, which reduces its catalytic activity. Non-competitive inhibitors do not compete with the substrate for its active site. Instead, they bind to a different site on the enzyme and cause a change in its shape. If the inhibitor is binding to the allosteric site, that means that the substrate can still bind to the active site. It just won't be converted to a product. Because this messes with how much enzyme is functioning properly, therefore, the max will decrease. Specifically, Vmax will decrease. However, Km is unchanged. This is because we didn't affect the affinity of the enzyme for the substrate, because we said that the active site isn't affected. Next, let's talk about uncompetitive inhibitors. And I apologize for the naming, but I'll have to take it up with someone else. Uncompetitive inhibition occurs when the inhibitor binds only to the enzyme substrate complex and not to the free enzyme. This type of inhibition is specific to enzymes that have multiple substrate binding sites. When the inhibitor binds to the enzyme substrate complex, it prevents the complex from being converted into a product. As a result, the enzyme activity decreases. Since this affects the enzyme activity, Vmax will be decreased. Interestingly, Km will also be decreased. This means that the affinity actually increased with this inhibitor. Well, why? This is because the inhibitor is kind of locking the enzyme and substrate together. To understand why this would increase affinity, you have to remember that everything is reversible. So as soon as the inhibitor pops out of the allosteric site, the enzyme and substrate will now react to produce a product. This is why affinity increases, which causes Km to decrease. Mixed inhibition occurs when the inhibitor binds to both the free enzyme and the enzyme substrate complex. The inhibitor can bind to either the active site or the allosteric site. The binding of the inhibitor to the free enzyme reduces the enzyme activity, and the binding of the inhibitor to the enzyme substrate complex affects the conversion of the complex into the product. You'll notice that I don't have this drawn on the graph. That's because mixed inhibition can affect Km in multiple ways. If the inhibitor binds to the substrate alone, then Km will increase. If it binds to the enzyme substrate complex, then Km will decrease. This is for the same reason as why Km decreases for uncompetitive inhibition. Though the one thing that will be constant is that Vmax will always decrease because the inhibitor affects the amount of functional enzyme. Understanding enzymes and their inhibitors for the MCAT is incredibly important to make sure that you understand what you need to know to do well. In the next video, we'll show these same inhibitors, but on a line Weaverberg plot. You should be comfortable using both of these plots for the MCAT. So I strongly recommend you check out our next video, and then I promise you'll be good on inhibitors. I'll see you next time.